The full lineup of the upcoming RDNA 4 based GPUs from AMD has been leaked, and to everyone's surprise, instead of an 8800 XT, we're now getting the 9070 XT, along with other 9000 series GPUs, at least for the mainstream desktop segment. We already knew that AMD was going to focus on the mainstream for this upcoming generation, but if the leaked performance numbers are to be believed, it seems that AMD will not actually be focusing on the mainstream, they will be focusing on becoming even less relevant in the GPU market. So you just got a bunch of PC parts from Santa Claus and you are now building a kick-ass PC? Well, there's one thing missing, an official Windows 11 key so that you can activate your OS. It just so happens that today's sponsor, URCDKeys.com, is running a special Christmas sale on precisely Windows OEM keys. If you buy a Windows key directly from Microsoft, you'll pay around $150 depending on your region. And that's for a home edition license. But if you buy an OEM key from URCDKeys.com, you will only have to pay $21.86 at the time of making this video, if you use my coupon code C25. And that's for Windows 11 Pro. These keys work globally and you'll get them within minutes. You can pay with a credit card or with PayPal. After purchasing, go to your purchased orders page and copy the key, and then on your Windows 11 install, type in the search activate and enter your key in the appropriate field and click activate. And that's it, your Windows is activated and you can change your wallpaper and customize Windows and all that. You can also get Office 2021 Professional Plus at less than half the price with my coupon code C25. Check the links in the video description for your cheap OEM Windows keys today. So this leak for the upcoming lineup of AMD's next generation, or should we call it last generation discrete GPUs, comes from all the watts on Twitter, who has a good track record when it comes to leaking AMD products. In fact, he or she accurately leaked Navi 48 and 44 back in August of this year. In this new leak, we find the full RX 9000 series, from the 9070 XD down to the 9040, the mobile GPU use are the 8060S, 8050S and 8040S, although confusingly there also appears to be a 9070M XT and 9070M as well as a 9070S. So the S variants should be the APUs and the M variants should be the discrete mobile variants, I'm guessing. Within the desktop 9000 series there's an XT variant and a non-XT variant, as has been the case in the last few generations. So for instance there's the 9070 XT and just 9070. But where's the 8800 XT? Wasn't that confirmed a while back? Before we even look at performance and pricing, just a quick mention on the change to the naming scheme. While it is ridiculous, no doubt about it, it's really not that consequential as you'll see, especially considering how AMD really only serves their core fans these days, as far as gaming GPUs are concerned. And their fans generally stay on top of news about the company, so they'll understand what an 9070 is. It's a mid-range GPU that's targeting NVIDIA 70 class alternative. These constant naming changes are further evidence that AMD continues to chase shadows, and we're seeing the same with the upcoming APUs, which now copy Intel's naming change. Also thinking ahead, I don't think AMD is planning to launch a 10,070 XT after this. <laughs> that would be a truly ridiculous name even by AMD standards, so this seems like a desperate attempt to dig out some sales out of unaware consumers before they completely change the naming scheme, starting with RDNA 5, with what I assume will be a complete GPU redesign, probably featuring chiplets, as we'll see in a second. So taking into account what the Strix APUs will now be called, the RDNA 5 GPUs will probably be named the RX 300 or 400 series. As for performance, which is what really matters at the end of the day, all the watts also leaked a Firestrike score for 
the 9070 XT, where it gets 22,894 points, so that's slightly ahead of your typical 4070 Ti score. Using Tech Power Up's GPU database, we see that the 4070 Ti is about 12% slower than AMD's own 7900 XT, and Alderwatts estimates the price of the 9070 XT to be $650. So clearly, the 9070 XT is positioned as an upper mid-range card that is slower than last-gen's high-end cards. It's basically a 7900 GRE. Looking on Amazon, the 4070 Ti is currently selling for around $800, while AMD 7900 GRE is going for $650. And like I said, that's about equivalent in performance to this leaked 9070 XT, assuming the leaks are legit, of course. So this new 9070 XT is, as things stand, extremely similar to AMD's own 7900 GRE, but presumably with much better ray tracing performance, right? I've heard whispers that some leakers out there even suggest a three times or four times the ray tracing performance compared to RDNA 3. Well, not even close. A day after all the what's leaked all this info, he or she also shared a Port Royal score which gives us an idea of what the ray tracing performance will be on the 9070 XT, again assuming these leaks are accurate. The 9070 XT gets 14,723 points in Port Royal, which is about 19% faster than the 7900 GRE. So it's not 300% faster in ray tracing than the current gen, but rather 19% which puts the 9070 XT roughly on par with Nvidia's 4070 Ti in ray tracing. So one way to look at this GPU is that AMD is selling you the same 7900 GRE that they've already had on offer for the same price, but with the ray tracing aspect fixed. I think that's a decent summary considering the information we have so far. So the question is, what is the point of this GPU? I don't think having improved ray tracing capabilities will change anything for AMD's chances in the market. The people who are buying AMD GPUs were already okay with them having worse ray tracing performance. The point of AMD's offerings were getting GPUs that were close to Nvidia's raster performance, but for less money. Let's face it, that has been the unfortunate state of the GPU market for years now. Good ray tracing performance is a nice to have feature, but it's never been a deal breaker. So who exactly will be interested in a 9070 XT or a 9070 or a 9060, 9050 or 9040? I'll tell you who. No one. And as far as AMD is concerned, that is totally fine. Let me explain. When AMD announced the 7900 XTX and XT a couple of years ago, I said it was the worst GPU in the company's history. And despite the torrent of AMD fans disliking what I said and unsubscribing from the channel, the reality is that I've been proven correct, with AMD's market share in the discrete GPU segment being to date the lowest it has been in the last 15 years, if not longer, at a mere 12%. When I made that video discussing the 7900 XTX and XT, AMD's share was 18%. The 7000 series GPUs cost them a 6% loss in market share down to only 12% of the market now. In 2010, 15 years ago, AMD stood at 45% of the market share. The 7000 series were a disaster and the 9000 series will be even worse. The only way this 9070 XT would make any sense if the information in these leaks is correct regarding performance would be if AMD launched it at something like $400, which we all know won't happen. In fact, in all the what's leaked, the price range for the 9070s starts at $450, so that will be the 9070 non-XT, if I'm understanding the leak correctly, and the 9070 XT is to be priced at $650, so the lineup would look something like this. As you can tell, these are not exactly disruptive prices. They they fall in line with what AMD is already offering today, which, if the market share is any indication, no one wants. So no one will want the new lineup either. If we want to look at an example of market disruption, Intel just released their Battle Mage B580 graphics card for only $250, and the card is sold out everywhere. 
Now, you might remember Jack Huyen's interview three months ago with Tom's Hardware, where he confirmed that AMD was deprioritizing flagship gaming GPUs. He said that AMD did not want to have the king of the hill GPU, but rather focus on the 80% of the total addressable market, where most of the money is spent. So that's your mid-range and low-end GPUs, basically. Turns out that was just damage control and complete BS, if this leak is correct. First, Firstly, if AMD is claiming they want to distance themselves from Nvidia's territory of the 10% upper segment of the market, then why are they copying Nvidia's naming scheme? So do they want to distance themselves from Nvidia by copying Nvidia? Some conflicting messaging there, but okay. But again, if the idea is to target the 80% of the TAM, so that's the people who buy the 70 class and lower GPUs, why is the 9070 XT priced exactly the same as the options already on the market? What is the differentiation element here that is in line with what Huyin said in that Tom's Hardware interview of abandoning the high-end GPU market to aggressively target the mid-range and low-end? Remember Jack Huyin, who is AMD's Senior Vice President and General Manager manager of the Computing and Graphics Group, and who we see in AMD's product announcement videos, said that the goal of RDNA 4 is to get widespread developer adoption, so that in the future they can go back to targeting the high end. Really? With a lineup of graphics card that is pretty much the same as the one that no one wants, and thus has no widespread adoption by developers, how do these GPUs fit into that strategy? They don't. They are more of the same, more of a strategy that failed, that in the last two years or so drove AMD's market share from 18% down to 12%. What Intel did with the B580, that is targeting the 80% of the TAM with a $250 GPU. That is distancing themselves from Nvidia and offering something compelling, something that Nvidia is not offering because it would mean they would have to relinquish their obscene profit margins. The 7000 series has less than a 0.2% presence in the Steam hardware survey for all of the 7000 series GPUs. Let that sink in. So what's probably happening here, I think, is that the 9000 series is a botched chiplet's design. What I mean by that is that the 9070 XT was probably one chiplet of a multi-chiplet GPU that was meant to target the high end, but that AMD did not manage to get working in a chiplet's configuration. Configuration. So ahead of launching an unbuyable product, Jack Huyen came out to do damage control by saying this failed chipless lineup is actually meant to target the mid-range and low end. The problem is, TSMC isn't doing freebies. TSMC is charging exponentially more for a new GPU design than two years ago and four years ago. It costs $1 billion to spin a GPU at TSMC. So to sell these 9,000 GPUs at disruptive prices, AMD would have to take an absurd loss at a time where everyone is questioning their lack of results in the AI boom, with Amazon even cancelling bringing AMD server products online, at least for the time being, for lack of demand. Everyone is on the CUDA mode and AMD isn't breaking through it. Lisa Su and team are looking at Intel and thinking the last thing they need is earnings calls next year, explaining why they are writing off a couple of billion dollars on a failed GPU generation. So they thought, well, let's see how we can spin this. So now, again, I'm assuming these leaks are true, and given that we have Time Spy results and Port Royal results with the GPU naming scheme on there, and more than one source confirming it, what AMD is doing is dumping these cards on the market and maintaining the status quo, hoping that at least AMD fans will buy the new cards on the promise of ray tracing now being on par with Nvidia's last generation of cards. That's yet another reason to just name these the 9000s series, because there won't be a 10,000 series. Like I said earlier, I suspect AMD is rushing to put out RDNA 5 ASAP, and that will be the fixed chiplet space GPUs that they hope will give them a fighting chance in the market. Sort of a zen moment, but in GPU land.
About a year ago, I did a video covering an AMD patent that presented a solution for a chipless based GPU where an indexing system was used to distribute draw calls. I'll put a link in the video's description if you want to refresh your memory, but basically the idea was to divide the work done on an object through various geometry engines inside each chiplet. And I also covered in that video what the potential bottlenecks and problems were for such a solution. Well, if AMD had indeed envisioned RDNA 4 to be used in chiplet based cards, but just could not get it to work properly because of the bottlenecks I mentioned in that video, or they didn't get it working in a way that resulted in actual gains, what we are seeing with this Nonsen 9000 series is a salvage microarchitecture that was never meant to be used as single chip modules. If two of the Navi 44 9070 XT's chips could work well in conjunction, then you'd be looking at the normal cadence of AMD versus Nvidia performance-wise. But probably once AMD realized the writing was on the wall for RDNA 4, they cancelled what would have been the higher-end models. Again, it's called damage control, and that's the only thing that makes sense to me. But I could be wrong, just like I was wrong about the 7000 series being the worst product in Radeon's history, right? This video was made possible by my loyal patrons. Be sure to show your support by becoming a patron today just like them for just a couple of dollars per month and you'll get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server where myself and an awesome community of tech enthusiasts discuss tech every day. Thanks for watching and until the next one.